Hi everyone, my name is Myron Tang. I'm a traffic engineer who works in the US. Let's talk today about speed humps. It's a very common question I get when I'm on the job. There's a lot of fast cars on my street. How do I get a speed hump? Cities in the US typically have programs to request speed humps. These programs can come under various different names. Uh, the most common names are traffic calming programs, uh, neighborhood traffic management programs, or speed hump programs. The quickest way to find these programs is doing an internet search. If you live in a city, you search for the city, or if you live in an unincorporated uh, part of the county, you search for the county. And then I often would add speed hump program or traffic calming program and see what results you get. And the answer to how you get a speed hump is gonna depend on where you live. So I did some searches myself to give you an idea of the many different kinds of programs that are out there. Since speed humps are usually requested to be built on the public right-of-way, I will limit my search to cities as they are the ones that will have these programs. If you live in a private neighborhood with private streets, you may need to inquire with your HOA or local governing organization. I'm using my iPad Pro to do these searches, my main driver for browsing the internet and taking notes. The first city I decided to take a look at is the city of Dallas in Texas. I did a Google search for the city of Dallas traffic calming and I was able to find the program under the first search result. I found out the city uses a five-step process to evaluate requests. Step one, residents submit the application. This application can also be found on the website and requires that two-thirds of the residents and business establishments also sign the application. Step two, city staff will review the requests. This involves doing engineering studies to determine if the street is eligible for speed humps. Step three, select traffic management options. This step involves the city recommending improvements for the neighborhood and getting feedback from the residents. Step four, distribute community ballot. Residents who live close to the proposed speed hump will get to vote. If 20% or more households or dwellings object to the speed humps, then the street will likely not get speed humps. Step five, implement the final design. This is the design and construction of the improvements that were selected in step three and will be done by the city. I want to note that I found a cost sharing element with this program and it may be required depending on how fast cars are speeding on the street. This means that the neighborhood may need to pay for some of the costs of constructing a speed hump. I next decided to look for the City of Phoenix speed hump program in Arizona and found it in the results by searching for City of Phoenix speed hump program. The steps involved were that a petition must be submitted by the residents with signatures of at least 10 households on the street. City staff conducts inspection and studies of the street and determines if it is eligible for speed humps. If approved, residents are to pay a portion of the cost in the form of a fee and work with city staff to determine the location. The neighborhood then votes and 70% of residents in the application area must support the proposal and all residents within 100 feet of the speed hump must be in support. If it gets the needed support and funding, the city will install the speed humps. I then decided to go to the east coast and went to search for the City of Boston Speed Hump Program. I searched Boston Neighborhood Traffic Calming and I found what was called the Slow Streets Program. It seems Boston's approach is a little different than what I was expecting. Instead of having improvements like speed humps done on one street at a time, Boston's program will look at the entire zone of a neighborhood. Residents will still need to apply, but instead of one street, a whole neighborhood is considered and each application will need to get at least 24 signatures of residents in that neighborhood. The evaluation process for the selected zones to get the improvements were determined by a number of criteria that was evaluated by the city. This includes percentage of youth, older adults, and people with disabilities, the number of collisions, and other features of the neighborhood that would make it a good candidate for approval. For the last city, I then decided to go to the West Coast in California and search for the City of San Jose Speed Hump Program. I searched for San Jose Speed Hump Program and was directed to the city's traffic safety webpage. I then noticed in a small part on the website that the city did not have a policy for installing speed humps on residential streets. This isn't uncommon. And if you see a policy like this, you won't have much of a chance of getting speed humps on your street. After further looking around, I saw that there is a program in place to have other traffic calming measures done, as speed humps are not the only way to slow down drivers. Looking into the program, it wasn't clear how residents could apply. So in this case, residents would be best to call or email the traffic safety section shown on the website for further information. After visiting a couple cities and getting an idea of what other speed hump programs are like, I will now summarize some of the key things to expect when looking for your neighborhood traffic management program or speed hump program. The process 
from requesting a speed hump to getting it constructed can take a long time. Not only are there a lot of steps involved in the program itself, but cities like to wait and batch requests and once they have a bunch of approved requests, they construct them all at the same time. This can save the city money in the construction process. Another thing I found that was very common is that neighborhood participation is usually expected. And the reason for this is when the whole neighborhood supports speed humps, it can definitely prevent problems from occurring later. For example, residents don't always agree with having speed humps. If a neighborhood is split, speed humps can be constructed, but later may be requested to be removed by the people who don't like them. Having them removed costs the cities additional money. And residents don't always agree with the exact location of the speed humps. Even if they want the speed humps in their neighborhood, having it right outside their house means they'll have to deal with the extra noise when a car passes by. My recommendation is even if your city does not have neighborhood participation in its speed hump program, is to go on social media or talk to your neighbors about the idea of speed humps and make sure everyone's on the same page. This can definitely prevent problems in the future. We also found out with each request that the city will usually do a traffic study. Traffic study usually involves collecting data regarding speed, the daily traffic, and the amount of collisions in the area. My recommendation is if there is a collision, make sure everyone in the neighborhood knows to report this to the police and have it recorded. The city will not know about unreported collisions and it may be a big factor in determining if your street will be approved for speed humps. Last but not least, some cities will require cost sharing. Speed humps can cost a couple thousand dollars and if the city has to construct a lot of them, it can get expensive really quick. If this is required in your city, my recommendation is to make sure your neighborhood is aware of that and the more people who support it will lessen the cost for each person. So we talked about what you can expect when you request speed humps in your city. Now I want to talk about what happens if your request is denied. A couple things can happen. Traffic study results may not show that there's enough speeding or traffic on your street. If this is the case, you can try asking for the results of the traffic study as most cities will be able to provide it to you. With the traffic study, you'll have a better understanding of why the street was not approved. In other cases, the city may propose a different solution than speed humps, as these programs typically have a variety of solutions to choose from. Some of these solutions are speed feedback signs, speed tables, bulb outs, and various other kinds of traffic calming measures. As we've seen, some cities have a policy of no speed humps. If that's the case, you're out of luck. There could be many reasons for this. One common reason is speed humps tend to slow down the response time of emergency vehicles. Lastly, for those of you who can't find information about your city speed hump program, I recommend giving your city hall a call and asking for the traffic engineer or the person in charge with speed humps in your city. You should then hopefully be connected to someone who can help you figure out what the process is. As we near the end of this video, I hope it has helped you understand the different kind of neighborhood traffic calming programs that may be available in your city and the quickest way to find them. You should also have a better understanding of what to expect so there are no surprises. So did you find your city's speed hump program? Or did you request speed humps before and were you successful or not? Post below and let me know. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button to get notified of more content relating to traffic and transportation in the future. I'm Byron Tang, see you next time.